ओके फाइन ओके थैंक यू दक्षिणा से समारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यंता स्मरिया गुरु परंपरा श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा नाम आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत् पाद शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम पिज्ञाश्रम श्री गुरशंकर पिज्ञाश्रम शंकर सदुरु केशव वामन कृष्ण पांडुरंग आनंद परिज्ञान गुरु सद्यो जात शंकर सदुरु गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुर नम ओं सहना सह नौ भुनक्त सह वीर वह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ई ओं शाति 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 मनोबुद्यहंकार चिता नाहम न च्रोत्र जिह्ये न चाण ने न च्योम भूमिर्न तेजो न वायु चिदानंदूप शिवोहम शिवोहम न चाण संो न वै पंच वायु न वाप्तधातुर्नवा पंचकोश न वाक्पाणीपाद न चोपस्तपायु चिदानंदूप शिवोहम शिवोहम सो वि सॉ दैट आत्मशटकम और निर्वाण शटकम एज एक्सप्लेन वेरी इन वेरी मच इन डिटेल इन द लास्ट सेशन is based on three important principal teachings of vedanta that is the first one is whatever is an object of perception i am not i am not the object of perception i am the very subject of any perceived object that is the first principle second principle i told you if i am experiencing any attributes or any properties those properties don't belong to me the observer or the drik drik means the observer the seer the experiencer but those properties belong to the experienced object so there is here an object and subject vikalpa division there is an object which is being aware which is being known which is being cognized by an experiencer consciousness therefore i the subject consciousness cannot be the object which is experienced this is called what is called as the drik drishya viveka drishya means the object drishyam the object drik is the one who is the drishta the seer the seer can never be the seen that is number 1 all the properties and attributes belong to the seen or experienced object and not to myself that is the second one the third one is anything which is made up of the five elements pancha bhautikam and which is constantly changing i am not that i am that consciousness which is not the product of the five elements and i am the unchanging observer let me give you an example for this now i am experiencing this book the book is the object of my experience i am the very subject now i am looking at you the book is gone there is a new object of perception i am looking at myself in the laptop i am seeing my own image 
So the image is an object of my perception. It has changed. The perceiver consciousness is the same. Now I'm looking at the light which is there in front of me. That is the object of my perception. I, the perceiver consciousness has remained the same. The perceived objects are changing. I am the same consciousness which perceived this book also, experienced this book also. I am the same consciousness which perceived the reflection of this body in this laptop in front of me also. I am the same consciousness which experienced this light which is, you know, showing or pouring light on my face. So that means what? The drip or the observer consciousness or the seer is the same. The experienced objects change. Now I'm seeing something. Now I'm hearing something. I'm speaking now. The consciousness is the same which is listening to what I am, the words which are coming out. At the same time, I'm this perceiver of the Vakindriya performing also. The perceiver or the drip remains the same. The drisham only changes. So whatever changes constantly, I am not. Who am I? I am that consciousness which is the constant witness of all the objects which are coming one after another in my experience. And this is how I experience a number of objects in the entire universe. This is what is the Drishya Viveka principle and the three important principles of Vedanta in which we saw in the last session, we saw that the first two verses talked about, I am not the Sukshma Sharira. So what are the aspects of Sukshma Sharira Bhagavan Shankaracharya is taking? That is the Antakkarana with its fourfold functioning, Manabuddhi, Ahankara, Chitta. He is taking the five organs of perceptions or Jnanendriyas. Then he is taking the five elements, Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Apaha, Prithvi. Then he is taking the Panchapranas and he is taking the Karmendriyas. So the entire Sukshma Sharira has been discussed as not me. I am not the Sukshma Sharira. Why? Sukshma Sharira is an object of my perception. I am aware of what is happening in my mind. The mind and its thoughts are the objects of my perception. The sense organs with their deficient functioning or no functioning or absolutely perfect functioning are also the objects of my perception. The pancha pranas are the objects of my perception. Secondly, all of them are pancha bhautikas. All the five of them have properties, saguna, guna or properties. Therefore, sagunatva. Bhautikatva, Drishyatva, the entire Sukshma Sharira is a mere Drishyam or the object of my perception. I, the Atma or the Sakshi Chaitanya Atma is the constant Drik, the constant observer of all the changing observed objects. And I told you in the last session also, here, the you know method involved is in the first three line there is a nisheda rupa vakyani that means what they are also called vyavritta rupa vakyani or nisheda rupa vakyani where what i am not is reiterated first in the three lines the last line says who i am what is my swarupa i am that sakshi chaitanya auspicious atma chit ananda swarupa I am that knowing consciousness, chit, of the nature of the knowingness, the knowing consciousness. Purnatva Swarupa Atma. Ananda Purnatva. Auspicious. Because I am the one because of which the entire Sukshma Sharira is functioning. I bestow, I lend existence and consciousness to the entire Sukshma Sharira to all its 19 components to function as an integrated unit and also make the Sthula Sharira sentient and work along with the Sthula Sharira, what we call as the Karya Karana Sanghata. The body-mind sense complex, which is called the Karya Karana Sanghata, is perfectly working 
because of my presence as the consciousness that we saw in the first two verses let us go to the third verse now na me dvesha raga na me lobha moha madho naiva me naiva matsarya bhava न धर्मो न चार्थो न कामो न मोक्ष चिदानंद शिवोहम शिवोहम अगेन द सेकंड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द वेदांतिक टीचिंग ऑल द एट्रीब्यूट्स दैट आई एक्सपीरियंस बिलोंग टू द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ परसेप्शन एंड नॉट टू मी दैट इज द सेकंड what did i say the three you have to remember these three principles of vedantic teaching for all this very important drishyam i am not the drishyam i am the drip number 1 all the gunas the attributes properties belong to the drishya object not to me the drip the third one is the drishyam is always changing because bhautikatvat elemental it is an elemental Whereas I am not a product of the pancha bhutas, I am the very cause of the pancha bhutas. Therefore, I am not the pancha bhutas. I am not bhautika. So the second principle is taken here. What is it? The ob the attributes or the properties that I experience belong to the object of perception. now i am experiencing this cloth this sari i am experiencing this is an object of my perception this is drishya i am drink this has a property of a color it's of a green color sari so the green color or the greenness does not belong to me though i am perceiving the greenness i am not that green the green belongs to this cloth it does not belong to me that is what he is saying here in the next two verses that all these things the thoughts that we experience and all the abnormalities of the functionings of the sukshma sharira with all their attributes belong to the sukshma sharira they don't belong to me the drip so he says name dvesha raga dvesha and raga likes and dislikes they are the properties of the mind it's not even the body it's the mind that likes or dislikes especially when there are polar opposites which is the case in the jagat outside this is the mind which likes something which dislikes something the mind wants something wants to get rid of something raga means what i want something i want to acquire something dvesha means what i want to get rid of something that is why it is said actually you know in you know many texts vedanta texts the only type of karma that individuals do is acquiring and giving up hana upadana giving up hana dvesha upadana acquiring because of raga or desire so the dvesha and raga belong to the mind they don't belong to me but what do i say i hate this i want to get rid of this who hates something and who wants to get rid not i i am the very subject who has even understood and i am seeing the like and dislike i am aware that something which is not liked i am aware of something which is liked so where is the like where is the dislike where is the raga where is the dvesha it is in the mind the raga dveshas belong to the antakarana they are the properties of antakarana therefore i am not those properties so i have to be very careful when i say i like this very much it is my mind which likes it i don't have any likes or dislikes name dvesha raga i don't hate anything it is the mind because of its samskaras or because of its you know whatever you know impressions it hates something wants something i don't have raga dveshas name lobha moha i want more i want more who wants more it is the ahankara the mind which wants more lobha greed 
the greed is a property of the antakarana i am it's not my property therefore i am not greedy when i say i am feeling greedy for something i am not greedy it is the mind which is greedy for something moha i am confused i am deluded i am not confused it is the buddhi which is confused which is deluded it is the property of the buddhi it is the property of the sukshma sharira so name dvesha raga name lobha moha mado naiva me naiva matsarya bhava mada arrogance i say he is arrogant i say i was behaving arrogantly i was arrogant i am arrogant i am not arrogant it is the ahankara which is the uh, which is arrogant which thinks it is is something i am there's nobody equivalent to me we saw that in the 17th chapter of bhagavad gita also what kind of ideas they have the karta has about himself that you know nobody equals me i am not equal to i am greater than everybody else all these things mada this ahankara it belongs to what the individual ahankara mado naiva me naiva matsarya bhavah i say i am jealous of you i am jealous of them i am not jealous jealousy is not my property because atma is nirgunah atma does not have any properties it does not have any visheshanas what is it that has matsarya or jealousy it is the mind which compares itself or the ahankara which compares this individual with somebody else and somebody who is better than this individual this mind feels a sense of heart burn or jealousy which is matsarya property of the mind property of the intellect not intellect mind ahankara manobuddhi ahankara so this whole thing draga dvesha matsarya mada they are nothing but the properties of the antakarana i am those we have to be very careful that's why every time we say i am sad i am happy i am jealous they are not my properties they are the properties of the antakarana na dharmo na chartho na kamo na moksha the purusharthas dharma artha kama purusharthas they are the pursuits of the ahankara the individual mind not mine i don't pers- i don't have purushartha the purushartha is meant for a jeeva for an ahankara na dharmo na chartho na kamo na moksha if not then then who am i i am sans all this i don't have any properties i am the property less niravayavi nirguna nirvikari sakshi chaitanya atma okay another thing we have to remember only matter principle has properties consciousness principle does not have any properties what is sukshma sharira matter principle so matter principle has all the properties we can even extend it to the stool sharira i am tall i am thin i am dark i am fair what what do what does it mean i am talking about the properties of the body as though they are my properties though it is not told here because here bhagwan shankaracharya is not giving much time to stool sharira just passing he mentions as sapta dhatu and panchakosha otherwise he is talking straight from sukshma sharira onwards so what he says is न धर्मो न चार्थो न कामो न मोक्ष चिदानंद रूप शिव आई एम द नीरवयवी निर्विकारी प्रॉपर्टी लेस निर्गुण आत्मा आमस्मी ऑल द गुणास ऑल द प्रॉपर्टीज बिलोंग टू द बॉडी माइंड सेंस कॉम्प्लेक्स सो इन दीज थ्री वर्सेस आल्सो द फर्स्ट थ्री लाइन्स आर नेगेटिंग व्हाट आई एम नॉट इन द थर्ड वर्स इट नेगेट्स एनी प्रॉपर्टीज फॉर मी i am the property less nirguna atma and who am i i am the auspicious consciousness chit swarupa of the nature of nyapti swarupa the knowing consciousness making the entire stula sukshma sharira function therefore i am the most auspicious one 
the same thing the properties are continuing here the next verse also in the fourth verse na punyam na papam na saukhyam na dukham na mantro na teertho na veda na yajna aham bhojanam naiva bhojam na bhokta chidananda roopa shivoham shivoham so all that acquisition of punya and papa na me punya na punyam na papam na saukyam na dukham i don't accrue any punya by doing anything or not doing something i don't accrue any papa papa or punya papa and punya are not not for me dharma and adharma are not for me they are for the individual jiva a jiva which thinks that it is bound a jiva which has to go out of the cycles of birth and death it is for that jiva there is an accrual of punya and papa i have no punya no papa i don't accrue any punya papa why i am a karta i don't do any karma when you do any karma there is an accumulation of karma phala in the form of punya and papa but i am a karta atma abhokta atma when i am the akarta abhokta atma what can i accrue in the form of karma phala i don't do any karmas i am the sakshi chaitanya of all the karmas of the karta who is the karta the body mind sense complex ahankara is the karta who is the bhokta the body mind sense complex ahankara is the bhokta bhokta means what the one who experiences the karma phala karta means what the one who does the karma it is the vijnana maya or the buddhi or the antakarana ahankara is that which is the karta i the individual jiva thinks that i am the doer and does all the karma and therefore the karta jiva accrues all the punya and papa i am not a karta i have nothing to do with karma i merely witness all the kartritvam that is happening in the body mind sense complex like this light which lights up all the activities that are going on in this room uninvolved in any activity that is going on similarly i the atma is the light of consciousness which lights up all the karyas the karmas done by the karta and all that is experienced as a bhokta by the individual i merely light up the karma the kartritvam of the jiva i mean no way involved therefore i don't accrue kar punya and papa so the punya when i say my punya that i am happy now it's not my punya it is the punya accrued by the jiva i say what kind of papa i must have done to suffer like this i the atma have not done any papa because there is no kartritvam there the papa has accrued to the body mind sense complex individual is what i call as the jiva that is what it is i the atma the consciousness sakshi chaitanya is a mere sakshi to all these punya papa that's why we saw in kathopanishad where nachiketa asked this question anyatra dharmat anyatra adharmat anyatra arthat krita akrita cha he yama he acharya tell me that which is other than anyatra dharmat anyatra adharmat that which is other than the punya papa that which is krita akrita tvat that which is different from done and not done different from karma different from punya papa that which is beyond punya papa kartritvam bhoktritam tell me that what it is you know that you tell me that's what he says so here he says that na punyam na papam na saukhyam na dukham naturally sukha and dukha are the pairs of opposites which is nothing but a response of the body to the pairs of opposite transaction outside 
when this body mind sense complex is experiencing any difficult situations it experiences dukkha uh, discomfort or dukkha not happy with what the situation is sukha happy with myself and the situation and the world around sukha dukkha are the properties of the sukshma sharira of the mind they belong to the mind and they are also witnessed by me correct that punya and papa that i have accrued this jiva has accrued punya or papa that there is sukha that there is dukkha which is experienced by the body mind sense complex is experienced by me the properties of sukha dukkha punya papa belong to the you know the jiva the body mind sense complex but who am i i don't have those properties i am the seer i am the drik i am the sakshi chaitanya the witness of punya papa saukhya dukha not affected by any of them therefore who am i i am the sakshi chaitanyam or i am the mere karta and i am the mere akarta atma the sakshi chaitanya atma no papa punya accrues to me asanga atma that's why it's called asangat in spite of my being in and through this body mind sense complex i the atma is asanga i don't get any lepa from the punya papa dharma adharma nothing that which belongs to which is a property of the jiva or the ahankara न मंत्रो न तीर्थो न वेदा न यज्ञ ऑल द साधनास दैट आर प्रिस्क्राइब्ड बाय द वेद पूर्वा इन द फॉर्म ऑफ यू नो चैंटिंग ऑफ द मंत्रास और वेदास एंड सर्टेन तपस और सर्टेन डिसिप्लिनरी एक्शंस लाइक यू नो डिसिप्लिन्स लाइक विजिटिंग सेक्रेट प्लेसेस और वेदा द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ व्हाट वेद पूर्वा सेस न यज्ञा नो वर्शिप नथिंग रियली इज माइन ऑल दिस द वेदास आर दे आर एक्चुअली रिलेटिंग टू हूम द वेदास आर टॉकिंग टू हूम टू द जीवा नॉट टू मी द आत्मा आई द आत्मा डज नॉट हैव टू बी इंस्ट्रक्टेड बाय द वेदास आयदर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ यज्ञ दान तपस वाक तपस शारीरिक तपस मानसिक तपस all those which lord krishna talks about amanitva madambitvam ahimsa kshanti arjavam archachar acharyo apa acharya upasanam all these are for whom all these values are for who all the vedic injunctions are for who all the disciplines like tirtha yatras etc are for who chanting of the vedas is for who it is not for me the atma it is for all the vedic injunctions all that the veda asks me to do is for this body mind sense complex for this jiva ultimately to understand that i this jiva is nothing but this consciousness i am not this body mind sense complex all these are meant for me the jiva to understand that i am not the body mind sense complex part of me my swarupam is this atma swarupam therefore all the teachings of the mantras the vedas and all the disciplinary actions sadhanas that i am doing we saw in sadhana panchakam they are not meant for atma they are meant for me the jiva the ignorant jiva to ultimately understand this chidananda rupa shivo ham shivo to understand this all the sadhanas are meant therefore none of these sadhanas are meant for me then he says aham bhojanam naiva bhojyam na bhokta so i am not the object of bhoga i am not even the subject of bhoga i am not the process of bhoga this is i am not the bhojanam bhojyam bhokta i have nothing to experience i am not the experienced object nor the experiencer jiva nor the process of experiencing i am not that who am i 
I am that consciousness which lights up the experiencer, the the process of experiencing and the experienced object. Aham bhojanam naiva bhojam na bhokta. This we call as a triputi. That is who? The pramata, pramana, prameya. Let's not go into it. We'll, we'll, we'll look at it some other time. I don't want to confuse with too many concepts here. Let us just understand that. I am neither the experienced object, nor the experiencer body-mind-sense complex, nor am I the very process of experiencing. Then who am I? I am that consciousness which is lighting up the experiencer, the experience and the experienced object simultaneously. Okay, so when I say I am eating an ice cream and enjoying the ice cream, I am enjoying the ice cream. I, the jiva, the body mind sense complex, enjoying experiencing bhojanam, bhojam, that is what ice cream. So the experiencer, the process of experiencing. I'm the experienced object. I'm not any one of them. I'm not any one of them. All the three are anatma. And all the three are known by me. As I'm experiencing the taste of ice cream, there is this consciousness aware. I am enjoying the ice cream. I'm aware of myself enjoying and the ice cream simultaneously together. Therefore, who am I? I am neither the enjoyer of the ice cream, nor the process of enjoyment of the ice cream, nor the ice cream. Then who am I? I am that consciousness which lights up all the three. Aham bhojanam naiva bhojyam na bhokta chidananda rupaha shivoham shivoham. Who am I? I am that chit swarupa ananda swarupa atma. The knowing consciousness. Without any properties, nirguna, nirvikari, asanga, sakshi, chaitanya, atma, hamasmi. In my presence, sannidhi matrena, by my mere presence, the entire sthula sharira, sukshma sharira, sanghata works in this impeccable manner. Because of the proximity of the body-mind-sense complex with myself, this Atma, I am confusing one for the other. I am mixing up one for the other. I think I have the properties. I think I am the enjoyer. I think I am the doer. No, I am not. Because of this proximity, I am confusing. Really speaking, I am not any of them. I am merely the Sannidhi Matrena, the one which makes these things happen. Another example is given like an iron, an iron filings and magnet. Magnet doesn't have to do anything. In its presence, all the iron objects come to it. Similarly, like what Krishna said, Navadvare Pure Dehi Na Kuruvan Na Karayan. By his mere presence, the Navadvara Pure Dehi, like a king in the nine-gated city, not doing anything, everything happens in the sannidhi of the king. Similarly, I am that Chidananda Rupaha Shivoham Shivoham. The fifth word. Name Mrityushanka Name Jati Bhedaha Pita Naiva Me Naiva Matana Janma Na Bandhur Na Mitram Gurur Naiva Shishaha Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. So, I don't have the fear of death. Name Mrityu Shanka. Name Jati Bheda. I don't have any kind of a Bhedas in me. Divisions are not there in me. I am that divisionless consciousness. Jati Bheda means, you know, there are three types of Bhedas. We have discussed that in the Vivek Chodamani. Vijatiya Bheda, Sajatiya Bheda, Swagata Bheda. That means what? If there are two types of things, different things, 
then it is called as vijatiya bheda one is absolutely different from the other sajatiya bheda in one itself there can be many members and there should be a you know difference between the two let me let us take a human being and trees trees and human beings are different vijatiya bheda in the human beings itself there are many human beings so there is sajatiya bheda in the individual human being itself there are multiple parts of the body swagata bheda but here it says nade mai jati bheda vijatiya swajatiya swagata bheda rahita there are no two things there is only one atma there is not more than one atma and i this atma consciousness has no divisions therefore sajatiya vijatiya swagata bheda rahita atma aham asmi because of this there is no mrityu shanka bhai i am not born in the first place ajam ajo nitya shashvato aham purano ham therefore there is no question of the shad vikaras there is no janma there is no mrityu that which doesn't have a birth doesn't have that also na me mrityu shankha there is no doubt about that no fear of death when i say i am scared of death people say i have the fear of death i don't have the fear of death it is the ahankara it is the mind which has got the fear of death i don't have the death na me jati bheda I don't belong to any particular group. There is no vijatiya, swajatiya, swagata bheda. Pita naiva, me naiva, mata na janma. I don't have any origin. I don't have parents. It's this body which has got a parentage. Even the sukshma sharira doesn't have a parentage. Sukshma sharira is traveling. That's why once the body is gone and the sukshma sharira travels, it will never remember. who is my child who is my father who is my mother millions of lives millions of bodies all the relationships are related to the body not even to the sukshma sharira so pita naivan me naiva mata na janma i have never been born a gotram jati niti kula do gotra duragam nam roop guna dosha varchitam देश काल विषयादिवत्यत ब्रह्म तत्वमसी भावयात्मनि वी सॉ दोस निरिध्यासन वर्सेस इन विवेक चूडामणि दैट्स व्हाट ही सेज पिता नैव मे नैव माता न जन्म आई डोंट हैव एनी ओरिजिन और पेरेंटेज और गोत्र बिकॉज़ आई वाज नॉट बोर्न आई एम अनबोर्न आई हैव बीन देयर ऑल द टाइम not that i was not there sometime i'm here now and i'm not going to be there after this no all the pita mata janma is for the body na bandhur na mitram gurur naiva shishya so the bandhu mitra are all the relationships to this body putra putri kalatra kalatra means what spouse putra putri mata pita bandhu mitra all with reference to this body my cousin it is not my cousin it's this body sir my mother this body is mother the mother and father have given have given birth only to this pancha bhautika sharira that's all they have not even given birth to the sukshma sharira it's only this body when the sukshma sharira wants to embody itself when the prarabdha karmas have fructified we need a vehicle through which this thule sharira is brought and the mother and father the parents are mere instruments or vehicles for this jiva this sukshma sharira to embody itself so all the relationships are only body relationships my child because the child came out of my body and i just was an instrument for that jiva to embody itself doesn't belong to me guru naiva shishya hasi to what till there also we have to go guru shishya as long as i am an indi- individual i feel i am bound i say i am a mumukshu i want freedom i want moksha therefore i am going to do the sadhanas and therefore i have to find a guru to teach me 
This is with respect to the jiva. With respect to this body mind sense complex, I the Atma is absolutely mukta ha siddha ha nitya shuddha buddha mukta atma must be. Where is the question of a guru or shisha? Neither the guru nor the shisha. Guru with respect to this body, shisha with respect to this body. That's all the roles that I'm playing. When I want moksha, when I become a mumukshu, I become a jignasu, I become a shisha. If I have understood this knowledge, I may share this knowledge with somebody, take the role of a teacher. All these are roles. The roles that are taken by the jiva, body, mind, sense, complex. I have nothing to do with these roles. So whether it is Mata, Pita, Banduhu, Mitraha, they are mere connections to this body. And all these connections are Prarabdhavasha. Remember that. Today, if I have any friends, it's out of Prarabdha that there is some unfinished transaction. They are there. Same thing. If I have come into this particular environment and situation, it is because this jiva, this body, mind, sense complex has to finish, has to fulfill some transactions with this particular surrounding. Prarabdha Vashat, this body has, this jiva has embodied itself among some people here. So where is the question of mamakara here? So there is no ahankara, mamakara, varjita, atma, ahamasmi. Nothing belongs to me, nobody belongs to me. Pita naiva, me naiva, mata na janma. Pita mata of this body. It doesn't mean we shouldn't respect them. It doesn't mean we should not. We should play our role. According to the Shastra, yes, I am not actually the son or daughter to anybody. Nobody is my father or mother. Really speaking, nobody is a friend. But this body mind sense complex has a certain duty or a role to play with respect to these, 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 these people. And this body is going to, body mind sense complex is going to fulfill this duty of prarabdha. But who am I? I am that Sakshi Chaitanya Atma, uninvolved, unaffected by any of the roles that this body mind sense complex is playing. Then who am I? Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. I am that Ananda Swarupa Chit Swarupa Atma. I have nothing to do with the roles that this body mind is playing. I have nothing to do with the properties of the body mind. I have nothing to do with the Purusharthas that the Jiva has. Now the last verse which says, I don't even have the bondage and freedom, you know, mokshas also, no, because I'm ever free. So this is the extent to which I have to really understand what actually Advaita is. So what does he say in the last verse? What does he, what Bhagavan Shankaracharya says? Sorry, yeah, Pita Nevanso. And then Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Chivoham. In the last verse, what he says is that, who am I? What is my Swarupam? He wants to, you know, sort of reiterate the positive aspect, the Swarupa Lakshadas of me. In all these five verses, what was done? The first three lines talked about the Nisheda Swarupa or Vyavritta Vakyani, Nisheda Vakyani. What I am not. And last line said, Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. That Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham is going to be expanded in the last verse. And the Swarupa Lakshanas, who am I then? If I am not this, I am not this, I am not this, I am not this, am I Shunya then? Am I nothing then? No. I am a positive presence, positive consciousness. Who is, what is this consciousness? What is my Swarupa actually? That is what is going to be told in the sixth verse, the final verse. Aham nirvikalpo nirakara rupo vibhur vyapa sarvatra sarpendriyanam sadame samatvam namuktir nabandhaha chidananda rupaha shivoham shivoham. So, aham, then who am I? If I am not any of this, if I am not the Stula Sharira, Sukshva Sharira, Karana Sharira, if I am not the properties belong to this, belonging to the Stula Sharira, Sukshma Sharira, Karana Sharira, if I am not, you know, the Karta Bhokta, 
if i am not the roles that i am playing if there is no if i am not the ahankara that i am thinking of or the mamakara of people around me or my nothing belongs to me neither this body mind sense complex or anything then what am i what is my swarupam then aham nirvikalpah nirvikalpah i don't have any divisions in me vikalpas are not there i am one continuous consciousness principle without any division there are no bhedas there is nothing called inner and outer like space like light can you divide the space no it is only an arbitrary division like in this house in this room i have got space i call this the room space is it really the division of the space arbitrary division of the space when the light is there in this room or that room it is a arbitrary division can we divide the light and space into divisions vikalpas they are not there aham nirvikalpah there are no vikalpas no divisions in me nirakara roopah i am nirakara i am of the nature of nirakara roopah means i don't have a roopah i am of the nature of nirakara i don't have any roopah any akara we can take space and light space is there it is nirakara it does not have any shape size akara wherever the space is it takes up that particular shape similarly light there is no akara aham nirvikalpah divisionless nirakara roopah i am of the nature of absolutely no shape formless i am the formless consciousness nirakara roopah vibhu vyapya sarvatra i am vibhu i am that one which manifests in many names and forms vividam rajate iti vibhu vibhu means i am that consciousness which manifests as various names and forms in this entire universe i am the vibhu vyapya sarvatra i am sarvagata consciousness sarve indriyanam i am that consciousness vibhu manifesting as everything manifesting myself in various names and forms as the various objects of the universe i manifest myself i don't convert myself i manifest myself into various things and forms of this entire universe sarvatra there is no place which is there without me everything is in me mai eva sakalam jatam mai sarvam pratishtitam mai sarvam layam yati tad brahma advayam asmi aham in me everything rises in me everything exists in me everything resolves i am everywhere everything is in me there is not an iota of place where i am not sarvagatah aham asmi so what is that sarvatra sada sarvendriyanam i am that consciousness behind all the jivas and the indriyas all the indriyas of all the jivas i am that consciousness which gives sentience and makes them function vibhuhu vyapya sarvatra sarvendriyana sadame samatvam i am always the same samatvam there is never any change in me non changing there are no vikaras in me there is no asti jayate vardhate viparidamate apakshiyate vinashyati these shad vikaras are not there absolutely not there why because i am niravayava i am partless i am the whole when can there be any changes when there are parts when something is put together it can be dismembered when there are many parts the parts can be removed but then who am i i am nirvikalpa i am partless i am divisionless i am the whole therefore nitya shashvata purana what bhagwan said in bhagwan krishna said in bhagavad gita sadame samatvam i am the same 
am the same consciousness. So I am the same I when I was a child. I am the same I am when I was a youth. Today, past 60 also, I am the same consciousness. The body is changing. Body has changed. The properties of the body mind sense complex have changed. Dehi no sminyata dehi kaumaram yavvanam jara. We saw that in Bhagavad Gita. I am that changeless Sakshi Chaitanya. Changeless consciousness. All the time aware myself. I am. I am. It is self-aware. All the time. That I am, that self-awareness is the same. Whatever may be the, whichever may be the place I am, whatever might be my age, whatever may be the situations around me, whatever may be the state of the body, mind, sense complex, I am, that awareness is the same, never changing. Sadami Sarvatvam, Namuktirna Bandaha, I am not bound. I do not require any moksha. I am mukta atma, mukta swarupa, nitya, shuddha, buddha, mukta atma. Who requires freedom from bondage? Not atma. I, I am ever free. I am the siddha vastu. Then who requires? I, the jiva, have to understand that, really speaking, I am not bound. I am of the nature of the mukta swarupa atma. The bondage is a mere moha or confusion. And what does the, you know, what do our scriptures tell me? What does Vedanta tell me? It does not bring an atma and make it stand in front of me. Vedanta says, your confusion is because, hey Jiva, you are identifying with the body-mind sense complex and feeling the bondage. May you understand that you are not the body-mind sense complex. You are the ever free mukta atma swarupa. You are never bound in the first place. There is no question of moksha. Whatever you are looking for for moksha is nothing but your own swarupa. Therefore, look at yourself, your wonderful self the way you are. Vedanta is actually just showing me a mirror and making see myself what I am. Vedanta is not bringing in a new Atma and, you know, telling me, see, this is you, the Atma. No, it is removing my confusions. It is removing my projections. It is removing my false ideas about myself. Vedanta is only removing my moha. It is removing my ignorance about myself. It is removing what I think of myself, the wrong perception of myself. And when all the wrong perception is removed by Vedanta, I, the Atma, I shine in my own purity. And who am I? Sadame Samatvam na muktir na bandha. I don't need moksha and moksha swarupa. That's why Atma is called as the Siddha Vastu. Sadhana, sadhya, sadhaka is not necessary. Sadhana, sadhaka, Sadhya is necessary only till I understand my wrong idea about myself. Atma aham siddha vastu asmi. Therefore, namuktirna bandhaha. I have never been bound. The, you, the idea that you are bound is your moha. That's what our scripture says. You are not bound. You are ever free. But now you don't understand that. Because you are considering yourself to be something else which you are not. And Vedanta says, I will help you to clear your confusion. And when the confusion is cleared, when ignorance is taken care of, automatically this Atma, I reveal myself in all my glory. And then there is no question of mistaking myself for the body mind sense complex. So Sada me samatvam. I'm all the time there. In the same way, Ajaha, Nityaha, Shashvataha, Puranaha. Of course, there he said, Krishna said, Lord Krishna, Nahanyate Hanyamane Sharire Sethi. I'm not the body which gets destroyed, changes and goes, and another body comes. I'm not that. I'm not this ever changing, ever disappearing and appearing body. I am not the ever-changing body-mind-sense complex, the ever-traveling mind complex. 
you know the jiva but i am what i am the chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham i am that consciousness swarupa atma chit swarupa atma the knowing consciousness the knowingness when i say i know i know i know that knowingness is me nyapti swarupa jnana swarupa atma aham asmi chidananda rupa that is why i am the most auspicious because i don't have any kind of a loss i don't have any gain i don't grow i don't become small i don't become big i don't become small i don't get affected by anything i don't get sullied by anything therefore i am the most auspicious chit ananda swarupa i am of the nature of anantatvam or purnatva swarupa atma and whatever happiness that this body mind sense complex is experiencing is a mere reflection of my atma swarupa therefore who am i i am the chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham so with this we have completed the atma shatkam atma shatkam which is also called as nirvana shatkam and most beautifully in six verses bhagwan shankaracharya has given the most important three principles of vedantic teaching in trying to negate what i am not and then positively see my swarupa as to what really i am so the next verse next you know work that we are doing stotra we are doing is called hasta malakiyam there also a very similar thought process is going to be there that's why i have taken these two together hasta malakiyam in which we will find a similar discussion that is going to take place so atma shatkam is a good beginning for understanding hastamalakiyam also which we will see in the next session om nandantu sadhaka sarve vinashyantu vidushaka avastha shambhavi mestu prasanno stu guru sada sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu मा कशि दुखमाप्नुयात् ओम शांति शांति शांति